All right, we are live. Live at the Monroe household. Let's read a story. We're going to read. Oh, we read those ones. Oh, Cinderella from the Little Golden Books Disney Classics. We haven't even opened this book before. See? Wow, look how hard that is. Okay. Go ahead, you have the comb. There's no comb here. There, there is. All right. Once upon a time, there lived a kindly gentleman. He had a very fine home and a lovely daughter. And he gave her all the money, things that money could buy. A pony, and a puppy named Bruno, and many beautiful creatures. The little girl washed, wished, here, come here, for a mother and for other children to play with. So her father married a woman with two daughters of her own. Now, she thought his daughter had everything to make her happy. But alas, the kindly gentleman soon died, and his second wife was harsh and cold to her lovely stepdaughter. She only cared for her own two ugly daughters. Here, comb your hair. Everyone called her stepdaughter Cinderella now, since she sat by the cinders to keep warm as she worked hard, dressed only in rags. But Cinderella was not sad. She made friends with the birds who flew to her windowsill, and her best friends of all were, guess who? The mice. The mice lived in the attic, and Cinderella made little clothes for them and gave them all names, and they thought Cinderella was the sweetest girl in the whole hey. world. Let's comb my hair, Daddy. You want me to comb your hair? Okay. Every morning, Cinderella woke from her dreams and went right to work. Out back, she set a bowl of milk for the stepmother's disagreeable cat who watched for his chance to catch the mice. She fed grain to the chickens and ducks and geese. And Cinderella gave her oh, some grain to the mice when they went out to reach the cat, of course. Then Where's into the, the house mice? where she went. Where's the mice? I don't know. Along the, up on the stairway, she carried breakfast trays for the stepmother and her two lazy stepsisters. And down she came with a basket of mending, some clothes to wash, and a long list of jobs to do for the day. Oh, now let me see, so said a stepmother. Daddy. Oh, they're, they're, they're on there. Good idea. I didn't see them. Uh, one, two, three. That's right. Three mice. Mice. Mice is plural. Sweep the stairs, then you may rest. Now across the town was the palace of the king, and one day the king himself was going to give orders to the great grand duke. A prince must marry, said the king. It's high time. But he must first fall in love, said the duke. You can arrange that, said the king. We'll give a great ball this very night and invite every girl in the land. What is it got? A ball? It's a dance, a dance party. What is a dance? You know that when we, when we dance in the morning? Yeah. Yeah, well, all right. There was much excitement when the invitation for the ball came. How delightful, the stepsisters said. We are going to the palace to a ball. And I, said Cinderella, I'm invited too. Yes, you, mocked the stepmother. Of course you may go if you finish your work and if you find something suitable to wear. I said if. Cinderella worked all day long. She did not have a moment to fix herself up or to give thought to a dress. Why, Cinderella, you're not ready, said her stepmother when the coach was at the door. What a shame. Poor Cinderella. But as she got to her room, she saw that her friends had not forgotten her. They had been gathering discarded items from the stepsister's room to fix a party dress for her. Oh, how lovely, she cried. She looked at the window. The coach was still there, so she started to dress for the ball. What is a ball? It's a party. Wait, said Cinderella, I'm coming too. The stepmother and her daughters all turned around at Cinderella's voice. My bead, said the stepsister. My ribbon, cried the other. And those bows, you thief, those are mine. So they ripped and tore at the dress until Cinderella was in rags once more. Then they pranced off to the ball. Poor Cinderella, she ran to the garden and wept as if her heart would break. But soon someone, she felt someone beside her. She looked up, and through her tears she saw a sweet-faced little woman. Oh, said Cinderella, good evening. Who are you? I am your fairy godmother, said the woman. Now dry your tears. You can't go to the ball looking like that. Let's see, the first thing you need is a pumpkin. The fairy godmother said, 
Cinderella was confused. Oh, what's that? That's a pumpkin. What's that? That's another, that's a pumpkin carriage. She brought over a pumpkin. Fairy Godmother said some magic words. Slowly, the pumpkin turned that's into a not fancy... That's a pumpkin, that's an onion. That's a, a carriage. Fancy carriage? coach. Ugh. What's that? That's where she sits. What we need some next are some big, fine mice. The touch of the swan, Cinderella's little friends turned into some handsome horses. Then the old horse became a fine coachman, Where? and Bruno the dog turned into a footman. What is a dog? What is a dog? See? There, said the fairy godmother. Oh, hop Not in. Bought. Magic only lasts till midnight. But my dress, my said hair. Cinderella, looking at her rags. Oh, of course you can't go in like that. The wand waved again, and there stood Cinderella in the most beautiful gown in the world, and tiny slippers of glass. The prince's ball was underway. As soon as Cinderella appeared in the doorway, the prince walked over and asked her to dance. The king mentioned to his musicians, and they struck up a dreamy waltz. The prince and Cinderella swirled across the dance floor, and the king went happily away to bed. The prince and Cinderella danced every dance until the clock in the palace tower struck midnight. Bong, bong. Oh, cried Cinderella. The magic was about to end. That's right. Without a word, she ran out the door. One of her little glass slippers fell off, but she could not stop. She leapt into her coach, and they raced home. But the spell was soon broken. Mr. Glass Mommy slipper, the mice said. The glass slipper. Mr. Mommy Pumpkin. I don't know. Hmm? Cinderella looked down. Sure Mommy. enough, there was a glass slipper on the pavement. What is a glass? Mwah. It's a glass slipper. Like, you you have a glass slipper. Oh, thank you, fairy god. Well, Cinderella looked down. Sure enough, there was a glass slipper on the pavement. Oh, thank you, fairy godmother, she said. What does godmother? That's, um... Maybe what is a godmother? It's kind of a silly question. Auntie Ivy's your godmother. No, what is a godmother? She takes care of you if bad things happen to daddy. And the next morning, the king learned that the prince wanted to marry the slipper's owner. Find her, score the kingdom. Find that girl, he shouted to the duke. News of the duke's search ran on ahead. The stepsister's mother dressed her ugly shoulders, hoping that they would be the prince's bride. Prince's bride, whispered Cinderella. I I must dress too. The Duke must not find me like this. Cinderella went off to her room humming a waltzing tune. The stepmother suspected the truth, that Cinderella was the girl the prince was seeking. So the stepmother locked her in her room. Please let me out. Oh, please, Cinderella cried. But the wicked stepmother only laughed and went away. We will save you, said the loyal mice. We will get the key. The household was in a flurry. The Grand Duke and his servant had arrived with the glass slipper. Each stepsister tried to force her foot into the tiny glass slipper, but they failed. Meanwhile, the mouse, mice made themselves into a long live chain. The mouse at the end dropped in the stepmother's pocket. He popped up again at Cinderella's room key. The Grand Duke was about to leave when Cinderella came flying down the stairs. Oh, wait, wait, please, she cried. May I try the slipper on? Of course, said the Duke. But the wicked stepmother tripped the servant with the slipper. Crash! It splintered into a thousand pieces. Never mind, said Cinderella. What's I have that? the other here. And she What's that? That's a scary cat. And she pulled from her pocket the other glass slipper. Soon she and the prince she was princess of the land, and she and her husband, the charming prince, rode to their palace in a golden coach to live happily what ever is a coat? ever after. Well, coach what is after. Oh yeah, let's go look at the coach again, okay? That's the coach. Alright. The end. Thank you for reading with me, Marie.